Yum, yum. Floyd here with a quick look at the new body option for the extrude tool and plasticity. When using the extrude tool, you can press the B key on the keyboard to activate the new body feature, which will enable you to generate a separate solid. Add this feature to your toolkit to expand the capabilities of the extrude tool. Floyd here with a quick tip for extruding in two directions and plasticity. By default, the extrude tool enables you to extrude in either the positive or negative. Pressing the tab key while the extrude tool is active enables the lock distances feature, which extrudes in both the positive and the negative. Pressing the tab key again will disable this option. Use this handy feature when needing to extrude in two directions. Floyd here with a quick look at extruding with a twist and plasticity. If you'd like to extrude a face, but want to twist the resulting solid along the length of the extrusion, simply create a line curve that starts at the center of the face and make it the length you'd like to extrude. Select the face, click the sweep icon in the lower right corner of the UI, click the line curve, then use the twist attribute. Add this workflow to your toolkit for future use. Floyd here with a quick look at the extrude tools freestyle option and plasticity. Activate the extrude tool using the keyboard shortcut E. By default, new faces are generated perpendicular to the selected face. Pressing F on the keyboard activates the freestyle option, which enables you to define an arbitrary axis. Use this handy feature for more freedom when extruding. Floyd here with a quick face extrude tip and plasticity. When extruding faces, it's not necessary to trim and join curves. If I select these faces and use the keyboard shortcut Shift D, a single curve is created. While this is much cleaner, you can produce the same end result when extruding by skipping that step and simply extruding the faces that make up the shape. Keep this basic concept in mind when constructing your assets to save time and work smarter. Floyd here with a quick look at extruding with the thickness attribute enabled in plasticity. Start by selecting a face, then use the keyboard shortcut E to activate the extrude tool. Next, use the keyboard shortcut Shift T to enable thickness. Adjust the thickness to your liking, right click to commit, and you're all set. With the thickness attribute, you can extrude a boundary or wall instead of extruding the entire region of the face. Floyd here with a quick tip for adding additional regions to an extrude operation in plasticity. When extruding faces, you can press and hold the control key on the keyboard and select additional faces to include them in the operation. Add this simple modifier to your extruding workflow to speed up asset creation. Floyd here with a quick look at the loft feature in plasticity. To use the loft option, start by selecting at least two curves and then press the keyboard shortcut L. Lofting can be a quick way to generate complex shapes from simple curves, so be sure to experiment with this powerful modeling operation. Floyd here with a quick look at lofting control points and plasticity. Curve control points can be lofted by simply selecting two points and then using the keyboard shortcut L. You can press the D key on the keyboard to mouse adjust the tension and the tab key to cycle through the continuity options. Take advantage of this lofting workflow to generate custom curves and plasticity. Floyd here with a quick look at lofting an arch and plasticity. There are several ways to create an arch connecting these two solids. And for this example, we'll look at lofting the arch. Start by pressing the numeric one key to switch to the front orthographic view. Then activate the three point arc tool and generate an arc. Select the top two faces of the solids, press control two to convert the selection to edges, and then use the keyboard shortcut shift D to create two new curves. Hide the solids, then hold the control key and click one of the curves to deselect it. Press F on the keyboard, start typing curve, and click on curve array. Select the arc curve, use the default values, and right click to commit. Deselect the last duplicated curve, shift select the end curve that was created from the solid, then press L on the keyboard to loft the selected curves. Click the patch holes icon in the lower right corner of the UI, which will close the open boundaries and convert the sheet into a solid. Delete or hide the curves, and unhide the original solids. Select all three solids, then press Q on the keyboard twice and right click to boolean them together and create a single solid. Floyd here with a quick look at the revolve tool in plasticity. To use, start by selecting the components you'd like to revolve, then click the revolve icon in the lower right corner of the UI. Next, click on the axis you'd like to revolve around and a 360 degree lathe or sweep will be generated. You can use the white circle handle to adjust the degrees attribute or simply type in the value you'd like to use. Follow these simple steps to take advantage of the power of the Revolve tool. Floyd here with a quick tip for using Revolve to create an arch and plasticity. There are several ways to create an arch connecting these two solids. And for this example, we'll take a look at using the Revolve tool. Select one of the top faces of these two solids, press Control 2 to convert the selection to edges, and then use the keyboard shortcut Shift D to create a new curve. With the curve selected, click the Revolve icon in the lower right corner of the UI. 
Hover your cursor over the top face and press the shift key to generate a new guide. Then place the cursor on the guide between the two solids and left click. Change the degrees attribute to 180 and right click to commit. Click the patch holes icon to convert the sheet to a solid. Select the arch and the two solids. Then press Q on the keyboard twice and right click to boolean them together and create a single solid. Floyd here with a quick look at the sweep tool and plasticity. To use the sweep tool, you need a curve to sweep along and a profile to sweep. For this example, I'll select these edges and duplicate them to create a curve. Then create a curve with six sides using the regular polygon tool at the start of the curve. With the hexagon curve selected, click the sweep icon in the lower right corner of the UI or press shift plus P. Then select the curve to sweep along and you're all set. Use this tool as an alternative to the pipe tool to sweep custom profiles along a curve. Floyd here with a quick look at using guides with the sweep tool and plasticity. Start by selecting the face or curve you'd like to sweep, activate the sweep tool, then select the spine to sweep along. For more control, you can select additional curves to use as guides to define the shape of the sweep. Use this option to maximize the power of sweeping and plasticity. Floyd here with a quick look at the pipe tool and plasticity. To use the pipe tool, start by selecting a curve and pressing the P key on the keyboard. You can adjust the section size attribute to change the diameter of the pipe and the thickness attribute to create a hollow tube. To use a custom profile, click the Select Custom Profile option and then click a curve. Use this handy tool to quickly create tubes, cables, pipes, and more. Floyd here with a quick look at creating pipes from edges in plasticity. Start by selecting the edges you'd like to build from, then press P to activate the pipe tool. Next, press B on the keyboard to activate the new body feature to create a new solid, adjust the attributes to your liking, and then right click to commit. Use this simple workflow to quickly create pipes from edges. Floyd here with a quick look at the offset tool and plasticity. To offset a single face, select it, press O on the keyboard, and then move the cursor to adjust the distance attribute. When multiple faces are selected and offset is used, each face will be offset, unless you use the keyboard shortcut I to have them offset together. When offsetting curves, you can press the tab key to lock the distance, which produces a new curve on each side of the selected curves. Offsetting edges also provides the lock distance option. Explore all of these options to take full advantage of what the offset tool has to offer to your workflow. Floyd here with a quick look at using the knife command in plasticity. When generating new curves, you have the option to enable the knife command by pressing K on the keyboard. With the knife option enabled, you can right click to commit and slice into a solid. Use this handy command to speed up asset creation. Floyd here with a quick look at the match face command in plasticity. To use, start by selecting a face and then click the match face icon in the lower right corner of the UI. Next, click the face you'd like to match and right click to commit. Use the match face command to replace the surface of one face with the surface of another. Floyd here with a quick look at the match face command in plasticity. To use, start by selecting a face and then click the match face icon in the lower right corner of the UI. Next, click the face you'd like to match or align with and right click to commit. This can be an extremely useful tool for aligning items, so be sure to spend some time experimenting with it. Floyd here with a quick look at screen space cuts and plasticity. Start by orienting your view, then use the keyboard shortcut Control plus spacebar. This will align the construction plane to camera. Create a cutter. For this example, I'll create a simple curve. With the curve created and selected, press C on the keyboard to activate the cut tool. Select the target body that you want to cut into, and then right click to commit. Press delete and you're all set. Be sure to experiment with this powerful feature to speed up asset creation. Floyd here with a quick look at using multiple targets and cutters when using the cut tool in plasticity. Start by selecting the target bodies you'd like to cut and press C to activate the cut tool. Then select the curve or face you'd like to cut with. To add more targets, click the select target bodies button in the dialog, then shift click additional targets in the scene. You can also add more cutters by clicking the select cutters button in the dialog, then shift click additional curves to use as cutters. Use this workflow for finer control when using the cut tool. Floyd here with a quick tip for controlling the orientation of a cut and plasticity. When performing a cut using the cut tool, you can define the orientation of the cutting plane to a specific orthographic view by switching to an orthographic view, then pressing S on the keyboard to take advantage of the screen space feature, or simply switch to an orthographic view before activating the cut tool. Use either of these methods to achieve predictable results when using the cut tool. Floyd here with a quick look at using the trim tool to create the Apple logo and plasticity. For this example, I created 11 intersecting circle curves using the center circle tool. 
All that's left to do is activate the trim tool and click on the portions of the curve I'd like to remove or trim away. Those familiar with Adobe Illustrator Shape Builder tool should feel right at home, as it's a very similar approach to building custom shapes from multiple curves. Once all the unneeded curves have been trimmed, simply select the two portions of the logo and extrude them. Next, select all the construction items and delete them to clean things up and you're all set. Meow. Yum, yum!